Xcode 16 introduces us to the translation framework, a new framework that is supported with iOS 18 and all of the other new software platforms that are currently in beta. Speaking of beta, you will need to have Xcode 16 beta 1 or later installed to use the translation framework and to do what we are about to do in this video, which is translating an array of German texts into English strings or German strings into English strings. Multiple different languages are supported and I'll walk you through this code example and show you how the app looks in the end. This is a basic example that covers all of the major use cases. Of course, you have to import the translation framework and then we can get going by defining our input array. Of course, this could happen in a view model or some other type of architectural pattern. I'm just doing all of it in the content view here just to be a bit uh, quicker to go through all of the code. So we're defining our array of input strings, which are four random German words. And we're also defining a state with our results so we can show the translated English strings in our app in the end. Secondly, we have to create a translation session configuration as a state property because the translation actually happens in a view modifier, which uh, has to happen in the view layer. So we will have to have our translation session configuration to be an optional state property. By default, it will be nil, which you can omit. So you could also write equals nil, but that can actually be on omitted and it will be set to nil by default. Now the UI is nothing fancy, we're just showing the results. Where it gets more interesting is in the task here because in our, or when this view appears, I want this translation to happen. This is why I use the task. You could of course also use on appear. Task is just a newer version of on appear, I would say. And in there, I'm just creating one of these translation session dot configuration objects. Nothing fancy. The important view modifier that I already mentioned is the one above. It's called translation task and you pass the configuration. So this is very similar to the on change view modifier, for example. And then in the closure of your translation task, instead of a task or something like that, you get a translation session which is the exact type that we used above here. In this example here, I have a couple different implementations just to show you what you can do. First of all, let's look at our translate all at once using session function that I defined down here. And this is actually taken from the Apple developer docs that are linked in the video description. So this function takes a translation session, the one that we get through our translation task view modifier here. And then it creates a translation session request for all of our inputs. So just to go back, the input is just an array of German strings. So basically we create an array of requests for each of these uh, source text strings. And then we do session dot translations from requests. So we can pass an array of requests here. We get back an array of responses and their type is actually translation session dot response. And then we map them back to their target text, which is one of the properties that these responses have. They have the source text and the target text. Target text is the translated text to English in our case. And that is already it. The, this results thing here is um, the array that we're displaying in our uh, body. So these are the um, five steps that are absolutely necessary if you want to um, translate a batch of strings when your screen is shown. Next, let me show you a simple alternative if you want to translate a single string, then you can get rid of this translate all at once function and instead you can just say response equals try wait session dot translate the string. So session dot translate string is the easiest function or the easiest way to translate a single string. With these sessions and configurations, you can also define the source language and the target language. If you want to do that, you can have a look at the language availability type to make sure that these two languages are actually available to create translations to and from. And then one more feature that you might find interesting, uh, for example, if you're processing a larger amount of text with multiple lines or multiple paragraphs, then you can use uh, for try await. So for await basically which means that this is an uh, async sequence here that lets you process the results as they arrive in this array. 
So it's a very simple setup to use the translation framework. It doesn't have tons of features, but it is super simple to translate from one language to another language, either a single string or an array of strings. If you enjoy videos like these, make sure to subscribe because I'm going to be covering all of the major WWDC24 changes in Swift and SwiftUI on this channel.